All right, hello and welcome. My name is Frederik Ekemark from Life Through the Lens. Today we're here at the beautiful beach in Campastilla of Mallorca. We are following up on our previous video where we talked about boards and folds. Today we're taking a look at the wings. What sizes and what styles of wing is good for you to start your experience with wing foil. So stay tuned if you want to know more about the wings needed to start your experience in the wing foil. But first, All right, welcome back. I'm Frederik Ekmark. Uh, I have this channel, Life Through the Lens. I'm based here in uh, Mallorca. My goal is to look at interesting topics. Here we focus on water sports, checking out wing foil, sup, and also windsurf, and so on. But other sports will also be featured here on this channel. Uh, we'll also tr cover the beauty of Mallorca, life-changing coaching, and we will do reviews of interesting products and services as well. So, today we'll look at wings for wing foil. Different brands of wings and different characteristics. What size of wing do you need to get started? Which wing are easier to handle than others? And what wings give great speed and stability? Those are some of the questions we will answer in this video. Tips and recommendations are based on my experience being a rider and user of wing foil equipment. Remember to start your wing journey with a qualified instructor or together with experienced riders. Always wear a helmet and an impact vest for protection when you add the foil. Be careful when in you inflate the wing so it won't fly away and always keep the wing downwind and your foil upwind. For a beginner who is interested in starting to wing, the question would of course be what size and what type of wing to get. Here is a table to illustrate what size of wings work well for beginners, intermediate and advanced riders as well. However, it's very personal depending on your background in water sports. In the market today, you have sizes ranging from two to nine meters. The important thing to know about wings are that the size of wings is not the only thing that matters. What also matters is the strength of the wing. The recommended wing strength for different sizes of wings can look like this, as shown in the chart. This is a general specification of wing sizes to use in different wind conditions for a person of 80 kilos weight. If you are lighter, you can go in lighter winds. As you see in the chart, you can also use the wing on land with a board with wheels like a skate surf board or just with a regular skateboard. This is a great way to get to know the wing. So now we know more of what wind speeds are good for winging. And other uh, things that take into consideration is also the difference between a beginner on a subboard and a rider on a foil. The beginner has a lot more resistance in the water with the subboard than the foil. However, the general rule to start learning to wing with a subboard or to go out in winds from 10, 12, maybe up to 15 knots. Remember that you should only learn to how to wing with onshore winds, so you can always return to shore when needed. It is also favorable to start in a bay, so you can easily come back to shore if you drift off. This is also a consideration about the wing. All wings are not equal in weight, and this is an aspect, aspect you need to check out. The question many ask themselves, shall I have a, a wing with windows or not? I can tell you from personal experience, riding both. Windows are great. It matters a lot where they are situated, if you have a good use of them or not. But generally the windows add to your security and comfort. But having windows still does not mean you can relax and think you see everything around you. You still need to pay attention because a wing with windows still has blind spots to be aware of. The lack of windows hinders your vision and the wing has to be lifted to see what's on the other side. This is not a big problem as you still have a good view of the area in front of you. 
However, when someone overtakes you on your blind side, it's obviously difficult to see them and you need to be alert and listen to maintain your safety at a top level. Avoid wing foiling in crowded areas as it's always risky with people so close, especially surfers at the local surf spot. Most wings are sold without a pump. So you need to know that you need also need to get a pump to be able to inflate your wing. You need to get one with a built-in pressure gauge so you can monitor the pressure correctly when you inflate the wing. When you inflate your wing, follow the recommended pressure stated on the wing or in the instruction manual. Never overinflate the wing as it can be damaged. When you inflate your wing, keep it downwind and attach the wing to your pump or to yourself with the uh, wrist leash. If your wing did not come with a wrist leash, you need to get one as well. It is very important. You can have the leash attached to your wrist or you can have it attached to a waist belt. The length of the leash should be a bit longer than half of the wing so you can turn it around in the water. Wing handles range from numerous small handles down to a central strut to fewer small handles to long handles to a combination of handles to a boom without handles and no central air strut or to a combination of a central air strut and a boom. I recommend that you get familiar with the handles and their position and that you comfortably on the beach can handle the wing and reach, change handles in a safe and comfortable way. Make sure you have some wind when you try out the wing as it makes it easier to handle the wing. But this feature to learn how to maneuver the wing before you go in the water is a very, very good thing to do. First, you have a handle on the leading edge. This handle is to hold the wing entering and exiting the water. You can also use this handle out in the water to, as a support when you're preparing to grab the handles. Also, when you turn the wing over, it is very important to use this handle on the leading edge when flipping the wing over. And in the future, when you are up on foil, you can also use this handle in the sea to depower the wing. Then you sometimes have what are called Y handles. They go from the leading edge to about the first handle on the strut and can be used when navigating upwind or just for ease of handling the wing. Try them out if your wing has them to see how they work and how they can assist you holding the wing. In general, the further forward you hold the wing, it's easier on your leading arm. If you hold your front arm a bit back, for example, handle two or a bit further back on the boom, the angle of the wing changes and you have a stronger pull in your front arm, creating more power in the wing. The back arm is generally at the very back of the wing to get the most power as holding the back handle shapes the wing for more speed and forward pull. However, if you want less pull, power and speed, you can move your hand further forward and the wing will be easier to handle. In stronger wind is a very useful position to use as less wind will catch the wing, making the wing easier to maneuver. The general rule is to have the wing at a 45 degree angle when you are in the sea. If the wing tips touches the water, the forward force will pull the wing down on its nose and you will lose control and many times also fall in the water. Dihedral shape, medium dihedral shape, regular shape, length, width, all these things matter in the performance of a wing. Dihedral means the wing has angled wing shapes and the lower middle part compared to the wing tips. This is to give speed and good free-flying characteristics. Dihedral shape can be more or less pronounced. Do tone and F1 is two examples of dihedral shape that are pronounced. An ENSYS and Aero starboard are wings with medium dihedral shape. This shape is the same as aeroplanes use and this is the easiest shape to handle. A regular shape wing is flatter all over. Most wings produced today are of the type dihedral. The length and width is also a consideration. If it's too wide for your length, the wingtips might repeatedly touch the water. Ideally, your wing should be free of sand and dirt, especially around and in the valve. K2 
care should be taken to avoid anything that can pierce the outer shell of the air tube since the air bladder inside is made from a very lightweight and thin material. Wings like kites are perhaps most susceptible to break when the bladder twists or folds or binds inside the out the leading edge or the center strut. Therefore care should be taken to ensure that the bladder fills the wing correctly during inflation. The wings need to be dried, inflated or lying on a safe surface and not hung when deflated since this can lead to bunching, twisting and folding of the internal bladders. Ideally, sand should be shaken off. Rinse the wings sometimes in fresh water, lay flat or hang partially inflated to dry before packing up the wing. We have now looked at many details about the wings and my wish is that you now have a clearer picture of what would be a good choice for you. Talk with your local surf shop, they can help you. Rent or borrow different wings. Since there are many, many wings on the market, you need to talk with experienced people who have tried different wings and boards to get started in a good way. My wish with this video is to give you the basic understanding of the difference of the wings so you can take a, make a good choice and have a great time in this exciting sport. It may seem complicated in the beginning, but the progression is fast. Just get out on the water as much as you can and practice. Start with good winds from 10-12 knots and up. Choose the right size wing for your weight, height and weather condition. Start on a subboard if you're a beginner. Master the control of the wing and the subboard. Essential skills will be learning to go upwind. If you're experienced in water sports, you can in many cases move directly to a foil board. If you want to learn more about foils and boards, you can click in the link above and you can look at another video I've talked about that. If you like this video, please click the like button to show that this is the type of videos you like and you would like to see more about. If you want to, to support this channel, click on the subscribe button and also the bell to get notified when there's a new video coming out. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I will answer them all. That's all for me now. Uh, I'm Frederick Eckermark from Life Through the Lens and thank you for watching. I hope this video has given you a lot of useful information. And uh, now, I will see you, yes, I will see you in the next video. Over and out.